Hi. Um, I have this old uh, 19, uh, 1997 uh, Evendrude uh, 150 horsepower engine. Um, it says that it's a model 1998. So, um, but still, it has this um, um, this the first type of fixed injectors. So I just took them apart. Uh, I want to show you how it's uh, disassembled and assembled. Um, this one I have had a part, I have cleaned it, kind of pre. First attempt to clean this uh, by using an ultrasonic de de device. So I took everything apart, dumped it down to ultrasonic uh, cleaner, and, and it looks it got quite nice actually. Um, um, it's a right and left threaded thing, this one. So meaning that when it's turned this way, it push the injector head into the uh, head, cylinder head. Um, so these clean just those threads, there's glue on them. Uh, red uh, thread lock glue. Um, so that's why they need to be cleaned. So when you put it back on, it will be uh, not having any forceful turning and uh, interrupting the uh, torque when you put it into that. So the uh, injector head here, uh, injector nozzle, what we call it here, is kind of just pushed in. So normally it's uh, easy to take out. So be careful when taking it out because there's a filter on the end of this. Um, this filter I actually have loosened uh, because I want to see what's inside. I'm that kind of guy, I take everything apart. Um, what I did, I used this kind of wooden uh, chisel thing and gently held this one in, in a vise without squeezing the metal and then gently just tapped a bit in one side and uh, a bit in the other side until it got loose, just along this edge here. So uh, just do it gently and then you can get this one off without any problem, without damaging it. Um, this part is very very thin, uh, very very fine uh, mesh, so um, be very gentle with that, don't drop it, don't step on it or anything like that. In here there is the nozzle, which is uh, when you push it, there's a spring, when you push it you can see it opens a bit, I don't know if you can see it, but it does, it opens a bit. Um, next, I put the it in, this one in the vise and put spanner on here and loosen that one. Uh, make sure that you keep it uh, this part up, up here. So when you take it apart, you don't lose any of the parts in here. Up like that. Um, Oh, so this O-ring here, it's, well done. it's normally sticks into the bottom of this uh, coil. So um, if you want to have that up, just gently take it up with uh, a dull tool or something like that. Uh, here we have the um, internal, normally this one is pressed down here with, here with the O-ring in this area ceiling towards this outer place. So. This one needs to be able to move very uh, easily. So this contains, oh, I'll take it on one go here. Uh, this is how it looks, complete. There's the crushing dish, the bushing here, which align this end of this internal activator piston, or what we can call it. Uh, the spring, let's put it back. This one is this unit here is hollow all the way through here so when this one is activated by the coil it will move towards a ball which is in, in here i think there's a youtube video showing the schematics about how the function of this is but that's one thing seeing it here like that um this is my homemade tool uh, oh yeah, again, 
be smart keeping this way this up so that you don't lose everything uh, on the floor which you can't f risk not finding it again but this one has a spring and a ball this is the ball uh, and a spring where this one actually hits this one when activated so in here uh, there's a, a small also a small sieve small uh, device in here kind of valve system i believe it is it, this cannot be taken apart without destroying it it is kind of forced or let's see pinched together uh, as one unit so here we have uh, inlet nozzle is slightly bigger than the outlet nozzle uh, the inlet nozzle has an unreturn valve in this area here make sure it works and it's clean down here there's a small uh, plastic seal uh, nylon or I don't know what it's made of but it normally sticks down here be gentle not to, to, to destroy it because it's sealing around this small edge here if you want to reuse it I do, I don't have any spare uh, the other one the other end um, looks like that there's no valve here so um, if the o-rings are intact I'll use them again this, this seems to be okay there's kind of tension when I it goes in there and don't worry about cannot swap them because the threads on those two parts here uh, are not the same this one is slightly smaller than the inlet one so if I try to put this one in I can't put it in here actually so it needs to be going like this very easily you can feel the o-ring um, this all this part I have used the ultrasonic uh, device to clean and before cleaning this is another one uh, it looks this little look like that so that um, the ultrasonic uh, does actually do a good job cleaning all uh, minor dirt off without and actually destroying anything so uh, that's why I prefer to do it like that okay just um, this one will just be kind of showing um, how the parts looks um, before I clean it um, this one I'll not put that down into the ultrasonic um, not all the way anyway I could maybe hold it down so that this top end will not be submerged and, um, I need to clean it down here anyway that there's kind of a little bit rust and things like that but it can be done manually it's not so bad now I'll put all the other parts this one um, actually it's kind of brushed it a bit scrape off this surface paint um, use the brass one uh, brush here um, uh, I might use the brass brush just about this area here that's a little dirt just to get some of the big lumps off uh, the thing is um, so I think it's good. Uh, what I think I learned is if it's if it's uh, normally dirt, it's kind of hard without any grease, anything like that, it's easier to be uh, um, taken off. I'm using uh, of course, a detergent which can uh, also remove uh, grease a bit, uh, but uh, just to make it a little bit easier, just to remove all the big bits and pieces was caught on this uh, unit, and then. We'll see how it um, ends up after the cleaning. Okay, so uh, let's go to bath. So and I put the parts in uh, the, the bath, and um, I put the heating on. It's not really hot yet. It should be hotter. It's too, too, too easy to dissolve things. Um, we'll uh, I'll set it a longer time here. 
give it a good 380 seconds. Okay, this is after the um, ultrasonic cleaning. Um, immediately, I, I did some um, uh, protection on this by this is called ah, sorry like this. I put on on those because there was some corrosion here, so I kind of uh, cleaned it up and and added this stuff. There was also some here. You see, it's actually now doing its job. So when it's assembled, I, I will paint it a bit, tape down the things which I won't have paint on, and then refresh the painting to protect it here, so to avoid any further corrosion. Okay, this one uh, got to look quite nice actually. Um, I'm trying to just focus on it. Close. Like that. Very nice. It was very black before. Um, again, the surface here. Uh, check for any upcoming, let's say, dents or things like that. It's not allowed because it have to um, have to be able to slide in here. Uh, this one had actually kind of a bit of corrosion in here difficult to see but I also cleaned it up now there's a there's a bit of closing so might have been uh, some moist in here in a certain there I think you can see it moist in a certain time in the corrosion um, because makes the, the distance between the, those two things very, very tight and might hang it a bit and therefore uh, could have caused it running uh, kind of rough um, and also of course uh, lean because it wouldn't lean rich depending on if it's hanging open or hanging closed so uh, but I think the parts got quite nice I did a little helping on that uh, with the brush because there was some big lumps that didn't get out and um, this one also I cleaned up manually in the button uh, I did a little uh, also something I hanged it there's a hole here, I could put a thread through and hang it so that this top part was uh, above the water and the bottom part was um, submerged. This one also got quite nice, there was a bit of debris up here and I actually kind of did a little helping here. It also looks kind of, uh, there was a bit of corrosion on that one uh, here. So. So I think now I'll try and put it together. I found that the O-ring on that one was where can we see it? Damn it, yeah. Anyway, it has a damage. You can see it now here. It's damaged. So there's a missing a bit so that means it'll be leaking so therefore I replaced it by a ring similar size um, that's it so now I'll put it back together I'll loop the, the parts a bit um, with some thin oil maybe I'll get some two straight or so oil will be best uh, and then um, put it back together Okay, that's that's it for now. Thank you. Okay, so uh, reverse order it is to make sure all this other thing is clean, no dust, no sand, no nothing. Um, I expect my to to clean this one more time. Just let that roll down in the bottom. This drawing is not new. I can see that the end one end is 
uh, kind of where it has been touching the ball. So I'll just turn that towards the ball again. So it's familiar faces that it's meeting. So, and then this one, my tool, homemade tool, here is um, it's, it's, it's squeezing, <laughs> it has to squeeze it on a bit and, and that's okay because now I can just have it, have it like this so goes in, notice, notice, make sure that this o-ring also is intact and no, no damage damage on it goes in, it of course needs to be torqued to uh, the correct spec, I believe this can be found in the manual I just put it back by hand, I might take it apart again for a second clean because now I'm just fiddling around with it to get familiar with it so again spring on here and this was go down uh, it must be able to go very easy this one uh, no, no kind of uh, hanging on edges or things like that uh, the test for that will be when these parts are put on hold it down this is the lining bushing so push it so you can feel it goes easy easy the o-ring goes here on top keep it upwards this one up so that you when you put this one on you don't get that one to get jammed somewhere so you need to kind of be more uh, kind of precise when you put this one on see now i did it <laughs> fiddling around with it i dropped it okay a bit, a bit shaking in my hands today Oh, there's something wrong. Yeah. That's it. That's it. it needs to be don't go down and uh, get the treads without any problems. Otherwise, you have something stuck in between. We don't want that. This part's not easy to find anyway, so you believe. Okay, this filter, I will press it back. I'll find a kind of pipe or something like that I can put it on and just tap it gently back on when I'm finished with the cleaning here well this has this small locking ring so it's in here you need to help that one go in place it should be like that so that's it talk everything in according to spec make sure it's clean and then I'll test all those again together and see uh, how they align with each other so again the, the, there's no um, what I could read uh, regarding these old school uh, fixed injectors there's no kind of calibration in the EMM uh, so they have to be within a certain spec uh, to each other so that's the thing I'm going to do here okay thank you for now, bye.